QuickBooks Online 2024 Vertical Analysis Profit and Loss P&L or Income Statement. Get ready and relax because it's so easy using QuickBooks Online, you'd think it'd be a crime. But it's not, unless you're doing bookkeeping for like porch pirates or something. But anyways, let's get into it. Here we are online in our browser searching for QuickBooks Online test drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening up the major financial statement reports like we do every time. The reports are on the left-hand side. We're in the favorites. We're going to be right-clicking on that balance sheet. Open link in new tab. Right-click on the profit and loss. Open link in new tab. Let's go to that middle tab that we just opened. Close up the hamburger and change the range. Going back to 2023, 0101-23 tab, 12-31-23 tab, run it to refresh it. Let's tab to the right where our income statement or profit and loss is. Close the hamburger and once again, go back in time, 0101-23 tab, 12-31-23 tab, run it. It's just like having a time machine, having QuickBooks, just like having a time machine. So note that the income statement is our performance report, as we've discussed in prior presentations, as opposed to the balance sheet. We enter the date range up top, which is actually reflected on the report, as opposed to the balance sheet, which is as of a point in time. We still have the range that we do an input on for the balance sheet. And that's because when we drill down on the numbers in the balance sheet, we will have a range type of report and it helps us to do our comparative types of reports. Let's go to the income statement now. And now we're gonna be thinking about a vertical analysis uh, type of report. Quick comparison of the vertical analysis on the income statement versus the balance sheet. If I go back to the balance sheet, we did this in a prior section. If I select the dropdown, you can see there's less information in the dropdown. And all we have down here is the percent of row and percent of columns. If I select the percent of columns on the balance sheet and run that one, we're comparing everything to the bottom line of the balance sheet, which you can say is total liabilities and equity, which is equal to the total assets. So all the assets are being divided by the uh, I mean, I'm, all, all the asset, individual assets like uh, the bank accounts, 2001, are to being divided by the bottom line of each section, assets equal liabilities plus equity, divided by 23436.29, and that's giving us our 8.54 about. So then if I go to the income statement, it's a little bit different. If I select the dropdown, you can see we have these different uh, different more at least options so we have the percent of rows that's not going to be too helpful for us with our with this particular report we're just going to get the 100 percent because we only have one column there but if i select the drop down and i undo that one and i say we want the percent of column so let's select that one so i'll run that one so this is not really the traditional vertical analysis that we would think of because this is comparing it to the bottom line of net income. So you can see net income down here is at the 100%. So that there might be some uses for that because that's given us kind of a ratio analysis of each line item, both income and expense compared to the net income. So in other words, if I took my, uh, my income line here of... 4736.47 divided by, and I go down, divided by the 1676.46, then we're going to get, if I go back on up, hold on a second, uh, if I go back on up and I move the decimal two places over, we get 282.53%, right? And I could do the same thing for my expenses, any of the line items, and you can tell what's being used as as the as the factor that's going to be involved in all of the ratios because it's going to be a hundred percent that'll be the line that's a hundred percent so that's interesting probably not the report that we look at the most the other one is the percent of income so if i can choose the percent of income and that's comparing to everything basically to the income line item right here this is actually the one that we use most often. You might say, well, why would that be? Why wouldn't it be the bottom line of the report? 
And the, one of the reasons would be, well, the income is actually what we're trying to do. That's the goal of the business. Revenue generation is what we're trying to do. So what we're going to think about then is look at the total income uh, and then think about all other line items as compared to the total income line item, both income and expenses. So on the income side, that of course makes perfect sense because it's kind of like what you would see over here on the assets, right? We're comparing each individual asset to the total assets to look at the ratio of where our assets are located. That can help us with our comparisons as we benchmark to another company. Same with the, this side of things, right? If we have different types of income in our business, if I was to compare to another landscaping company, I'm trying to benchmark them, I'm trying to mirror them. I can't just look at my dollar amounts and really be able to tie that into what they're doing because they're larger than we are and we're, we're trying to mirror what they're doing. But we can possibly look at the percentage of our income compared to the total to see if we're lining up to the model that we're kind of projecting ourselves to be. So in this case, I have the 4736.47 divided by the total income 10200.77. If I move the decimal two places over, we get the 46.43%. Uh, so we could do that all the way down. And then, of course, all the percentages uh, there would add up to the 100%, right? We've got the, so if we add these up, we have, for example, the 22.06 minus the 0.88 plus the 14.48 plus 22.02 plus 23.06 plus the 4.35 plus. I'm going down to here, the 2.45 plus 0.49 plus, And then we're going here, the 1.08 plus the 8.95 plus 4.94 and that's going to give us our 100 percent. so that makes sense but then down below you might say well why would it make sense for the expenses to be divided by the income and once again it's kind of because the income is the reason that we have the expenses the expenses